I want to come back to that, um, the idea of it's all about perspective. So we we're talking about that just now and, and tying that into the winner effect, because I know the winner effect, it kind of says that the more you win, the more you have confidence and you believe in your abilities and your serotonin and your dopamine levels go up. Yeah. So you're more likely to win, right? And the opposite is also true. Like the more you lose, you're lower in dopamine, you're lower in serotonin, you kind of fall down the socioeconomic hierarchy somewhat, and then you, you're you more likely to lose. And then it's this kind of negative cycle going down. But from what I've learned about it is that a lot, it's very much about perspective as well. So what what one person might perceive as a win another person might perceive as a lot a loss and it depends on how you see it of how the effect actually has an effect on you yeah it's really interesting yeah i think like you touched on a, like a good point there because like it depends on how you see success right so the like one of the main things of like the winning effect is like you know like we talked about it earlier like the good dopamine cycle so like that good dopamine cycle is kind of very important because good dopamine is like when you work hard for something and then when you work hard for it, you're rewarded. So that good dopamine, it kind of reinforces that, okay, for me to like get something good, I have to like put in some form of effort. And like Mm -hmm. when you, when you have that, it, it kind of like reinforces like a, a, like a positive cycle. So like the effort itself is seen as like the as the reward instead of the result. So mm-hmm. when that happens, like even though sometimes like you know like something things aren't going to work out like perfectly as you as you like want them to, but like you, when you know that like okay my like what I tried and what I did was like sufficient, it doesn't mm-hmm. hurt you as much. So it doesn't take away from your confidence as much. So. Like all confidence really is, is like when it were like having self-belief and like saying that you will do what you like, what you tell yourself you will do. Right. So like the thing that really hurts your confidence is like, you'll tell yourself like, okay, from tomorrow, I'm going to go to the gym and then tomorrow rolls around and you don't do it. And then you keep Mm -hmm. repeating it over time, even though like you don't realize it, you're kind of like hurting your confidence a lot because then like. When you say when you say you'll do something, you're like, uh, I said it, but I I don't know anymore. So like you've lost your confidence. It's because you've built up that negative momentum because it's just like you kind of have you can like do it in a positive way or you can do it in a negative way. But it's it's like that perspective and seeing like okay, like if I said something, then I will do it, and then like just at that adding up. It, it doesn't seem like much, but it it adds up to like building that like real confidence like people have. Not being able to stick to your own word is like a sense of it's well, it's like a self betrayal. Like if you said to someone else you were going to do something and you just said it over and over and over, and every time they believed you, after time they would just stop believing you. They would stop trusting you. So the more you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it, it erodes your sense of self-trust, right? And how can like, and, and in a relationship, if you want to have confidence in your relationship, you need to be able to trust the other person. You need to have trust in the relationship. So like to be able to have confidence in yourself, you need to be able to trust yourself and just doing those little things. That's why I think it's really important to start small and say, I'm going to do this. And then you stick to it. And you also talked about how like kind of making the, the process part of the goal. And, and when you realize that oh, I, work, I work the process, I might not have got the result that I wanted, but I know that I'm a winner because I did the process, right? And then the, the winner effect has its effect because you see yourself as someone who is a winner because you know that you stuck to your word. But making those things small enough that allows you to actually stick to it rather than making it such a big thing like oh i'm gonna eat healthy and go to the gym every day for the whole next year like start small say like next five days and then like 30 days and then do like a 90 day challenge but it's it's hard sometimes um when you're starting things out because 
because your baseline level of your habits are really hard to break out of, I've found that I have to do challenges to to create like a new normal for myself. Like I have to say, I'm going to do this thing for 30 days. And then once I do it for 30 days, then it becomes, I can be more flexible with it. But before that point, there's no flexibility. It's just, I'm not doing it whatsoever. I had like having this all or nothing mindset, I think like, do you know what? If I'm not going to go to the gym every day this week, or if I'm not going to go, cause I can't go on Wednesday and I can't go on Friday cause I've got this other thing. So there's no point in going on Monday either. It's like, no, if you're going to go one day, you may as well go. You don't have to be all or nothing. You can have this flexibility and, and this more of a light touch with things. Yeah, exactly. Like I think, I think the thing is like, you want to keep it as like simple as possible before you add complexity, right? So I think like one of the best like advice I've like heard regarding this is like um, before like you like add up to your to-do list, just make like a to, to start list. So it's like, okay, instead of saying like, oh, uh, oh I'm going to go to the gym and then after I go to the gym, I'm going to do this. I'm going to like, run on the treadmill and after that I'm going to eat healthy for the rest of the day just like make a to start list like put on your shoes get in the car go to the gym like mm-hmm. you know like the simpler action instead of focusing on like the like the whole process itself just like the easiest thing like put on your shoe get in the car like drive to the gym like if you're doing that if you're showing up like and like making it like easy enough like removing as much friction as possible to like get the tasks started it'll be much easier for you to be like consistent and once you're consistent like it you can build that habit like it becomes like more repeatable sure yeah yeah so starting with the really small stuff and when you talk about a lot about systems and building habits and skills through systems so what you yeah. touched on something then that is like this beginning level system for building a habit what are some other systems that people can use or what do you use yourself yeah. in terms of habits? 